trailing by nine at half and by as many as 12, plus without top wing defenders Andrew Wiggins and of course DeAnthony Melton, the Golden State Warriors fought through major adversity and have now won two of their last three games. After calling out Steve Kerr by calling for his firing in my last video, Kerr seemed to wake up as, for the most part, Stephen Curry was finally allowed to find a rhythm. 30 points for 30 came in 35 minutes played, the most playing time he's received in almost a month. Gary Payton II's defense on Anthony Edwards was clutch. Buddy Heald posted his first double-figure scoring game of December with a 27-piece, including seven threes, while being a game-high plus 17. Jonathan Kaminga added 20, and Kevon Looney was big time off the pine on a night where TJD received the DNP. Draymond Green hit the night-night celly after flying past Rudy Gobert and Duncan on Jaden McDaniels as the Dubs picked up a crucial win. The Splash Buddies lit up San Francisco on Sunday night as Stephen Curry and Buddy Heald combined to make 12 of the Warriors' 16 triples made for the game. Buddy Heald had gone over a month, which made up 15 games, without recording a 20-plus point scoring effort up until Sunday night. Channeling his inner lethal shooter, Buddy said, I understand it now, as his 27 points against the Timberwolves in a massive Warrior W came on 10 for 18 shooting from the field, 7 for 13 shooting from distance, and a lethal 75% true shooting. Displaying how valuable the streaky shooting of Heald truly is to this Golden State team, the Warriors improved to an impressive 9-2 when Buddy shoots over 45% from the field. Additionally, and maybe more notably, the Dubs improved to an undefeated 7-0 when Buddy scores at least 20 points in a game. Speaking to the presence of Heald and how much he means to this Warriors team, Heald's splash buddy Stephen Curry gave his take on him post-game. Oh, there's nothing even keel about him. He's, <laughs> okay. he's all extreme happy joy, talking all the time. Um, and you love that energy because he he loves the game. He works. He, he probably puts more hours in the gym than I think I've ever seen anybody. And the consistency of his approach. Um, he does bring joy to the locker room, to the plane, to you know, no matter where we're at, you're going to hear him. And I think he, like you said, he lifts everybody up because he's got a great sense of humor and he's been around the block. And you know, the funniest part, you just can't get him to shut up. <laughs> so you just uh, you, you appreciate everything he brings. A bit more in terms of even Kilman, he probably he doesn't get so super down. If he if he has a, a rough night, right? I mean, he stays with that that smile. And that. Yeah, he stays with that smile for sure. I know, like I, the work that he puts in. I, I heard him say he won't leave the gym until it feels good. So for that, whether he's in you know having a, a rough stretch or whatever, he's gonna put more time in to get himself out of it, and that's the commitment to what he does. His attitude doesn't change for sure. So doesn't let the uh, the results affect him as much as. Um, we talked about the lack of Warriors pick and roll offense in my last video, and while there were typically a ton of moments, not unrightfully so, of Steph working without the basketball in his hands and having success, Curry was operating with the ball in his hands a lot more, and in turn the Warriors were running a lot more pick and roll sets through Stephen. It's critical the Warriors continue to keep the ball in Steph's hands as much as possible, because working off the dribble with screens being set for him, or even when isolating, allows him to build up the rhythm you need him to be in. I also thought how Kerr was allowing Stefan to finish quarters, and generally playing him more, contributed to Curry finding a better flow than we'd seen in a while. Curry's 30 for 30 effort, in terms of number 30 recording 30 points, came along with the greatest point guard of all time dropping 8 assists. But regarding his bucket getting, it was Stefan's highest scoring performance since November 12th against the Dallas Mavericks when he dropped 37. That was also the last time he played over 35 minutes in a game. To end the third quarter, Curry would fall away from 38 feet from the basket in the face of both Rudy Gobert and Nikhil Alexander Walker for this ridiculous buzzer beater, and even more ridiculous was the Selly as Steph gave us the old man walk. Without Looney on the floor down the stretch, which was questionable from Kerr, 
Draymond stood the task as the five man, while working with five fouls as well. As here, Draymond first accounts for Conley in drop coverage, then rotates over as the low man to get over for a beautiful vertical contest that allows him to block McDaniels, and it goes off Jaden out of bounds. But the signature play from Dre was when he took Gobert to school by shooting past him after a couple saucy tweens while receiving a screen from Curry before yamming it over McDaniels and stealing Curry's night-night celly all the way down the floor as he got back defensively. Curry gave his take on that. I didn't. I saw it at the very end of it. <clears throat> I didn't know he did it uh, all the way down the court. I should say his is a little bit more aggressive than mine. <laughs> and I like it. I like it. You know, you make it your own. While we just saw the signature play from Dre, the signature play of the night was triggered by the young glove Gary Payton II, as with the score at 109-106 Warriors with just over a minute left. GP2 simultaneously switched on to McDaniels while picking off the Edwards entry, which led to Steph drawing the help of Walker on the fast break and kicking to his splash buddy in the left corner for the dagger. From the clamps to the steal to the swing to the sling, Gary Payton II had 8 points, 5 rebounds, 2 steals, and 2 blocks, and the All-NBA Defender's impact gets that much more important without DeAnthony Melton for the rest of the season. Matching Edwards minute for minute in the fourth quarter, GP2 held Ant to just 1 for 7 shooting from the field, 3 points, and he also forced him into 2 turnovers in the final frame. It was a masterclass of a defensive effort from Gary Payton. Speaking of clamps, and while Jonathan Kaminga just as importantly was the Warriors' third 20-plus point scorer on the night and posted 7 rebounds and 2 assists to go along with that, JK's biggest impact came defensively, which was great to see. From swatting Conley around the basket, to knocking it away from Edwards multiple times, Kaminka filled in for Wiggins exceptionally as he lived up to his potential on this end of the floor, a performance the Warriors definitely need a repeat of. Whether it was Curry getting revenge on Edwards for trash-talking him in the previous game, who Steph rightfully had respect for at the end of the day, Kavon Looney's league-best offensive rebounding making an impact, Draymond saying night-night, Buddy finding his flow again, Gary Payton the second locking up Edwards, or Kaminga filling in for Wiggins defensively exceptionally, what was the best part of the Warriors' recent win in your opinion? Let me know down below. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.